The New York Racing Association was founded in 1958 and they manage the three thoroughbred racetracks in the state of New York, which are Aqueduct, Belmont Park, and Saratoga. You know, the Saratoga race course was founded in 1863 by John Hunter and William Travers. Uh, the first horse race was held there one month after the Battle of Gettysburg on August 3, 1863. The race course is open for 40 days each year. Uh, the, the, we open in mid-July and we end on Labor Day. We average about 20,000 people a day in attendance. Um, on large days, sometimes 30,000. Uh, we expect over the 40-day meet to see about 800,000 fans. The race course comprises approximately 350 acres, however, only about 50 acres are accessible to the public during our live racing meet. Uh, it's those 50 acres that we've covered with the wireless system. The driving force behind uh, providing wireless at the race course is to provide a richer customer experience. We wanted fans to be able to access the internet, uh, get on social media, and even wager from wherever they are on the grounds. Prior to having the Ruckus wireless system, we had a Maru system that was only in our press box. The press box has around 25 to 30 people accessing the wireless system. They set up shop in there like it's their office, most of them using laptops. The system performed adequate. However, when we wanted to expand the system uh, for the whole facility and provide customer access, we decided to go with Ruckus. Before we got together with Deep Blue and put the Ruckus system in, we looked at Cisco systems, uh, Marikai, Maru, and Aruba. We did a lot of research. Uh, we spent a lot of time on tech forums. We read all the Tom's hardware reviews. We spoke to existing customers and we tested the system in a few places where it was installed. We liked it a lot. We thought the system ran really well. I uh, was particularly interested in the BeamFlex technology and we were impressed with it. The BeamFlex technology is unique in that it can beam the packet on a per user level to the user and block the other signal. So when you start realizing that, it kind of boggles your mind that it can actually on a per packet level do that. But it does do that and it really does work. And when we install properties such as a racetrack where you have to do a high density environment, you feel comfortable to make sure that it is gonna work. I would say 95% of everywhere you go on the track has a signal of 65 dB or better on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz everywhere throughout the track. The network is open 40 days and for those 40 days, it cannot go down. So by putting in redundant zone director 5000s, we're able to have one live and one in standby, and we're able to test the failover such as we pull the power from a zone director 5000. Within a few minutes, the new zone director senses that, it's back up and going. So if you're connected to the radios, um, you really don't even notice it. There's four wireless SSIDs. Um, there's one that's set up for the guest network that has a 3x3 three three speed connection, has inner BSS blocking such that um, no two users can see each other's traffic. So in other words, all they can do is get on the internet. There's also content filtering enabled for those so that users are not going to go to any place objectionable. Um, there is an SSID that's set up for the press box, um, and the press might have to upload a large video. We wanted to make sure they were unlimited and as far as the bandwidth there. There's typically about 25 people that connect to that every day. We have uh, another SSID that's set up that they can get to the other racetracks. So again, that needed to be locked down. And then the fourth one that's set up is for the hand scanners where they can scan you at the gates. So there's four unique needs that they have. And so that's why there's four unique SSIDs with different security rights and different QoS rules. We didn't have any major obstacles in deploying the indoor and outdoor Wi-Fi system. Our partners at Deep Blue Communications did a very good job uh, working with our facilities managers to put the system in. We started the installation a few months before the racetrack opened up. We had a lot of fiber backbones to pull and a lot of cables to run. Uh, we put all new switches in, so it was a brand new network. Uh, that took around three months. We went kind of right up to the couple of days before the meet opened, turned on the system, and it was great from day one. We worked alongside union workers. They pulled the cables and we literally um, put up the mounting brackets and hung access points as they you know, put the drops in place. This is truly history to light up an entire racetrack with a total of 35 access points. And on the first day, we did peak to about 1,500 users, concurrent users. Uh, they have brought in 100 meg pipe of bandwidth, so you know they presume that on uh, Traverse Day that they could literally, with 50,000 people here, they're, they're thinking they could get up anywhere up to you know close to 10,000 concurrent users. So um, we knew that our, on the opening day, we knew that our network needed to sustain that. The wireless system is accessible from all the public spaces on the track. We have a grandstand and clubhouse that seats 8,000 people. We have picnic areas, we have five restaurants, 
uh, in a number of bars. The customers walk in, they hook up to the Wi-Fi, um, it's free. I access the wireless system with iPads, smartphones, and tablets. They make a wager from their seat by accessing our website, narrowrewards.com. Uh, you can sign up and fund your account and be wagering in less than 10 minutes. Now that the wireless system is successfully installed on the front side of the track, we plan to expand the system to the back stretch where the horses are stable. The horses are all registered through the Jockey Club in Kentucky and you get a unique identifying number that's tattooed on the inside of the horse's lip. And that's the number we use to identify the horse. And you can scan the paperwork and check them in on a wireless tablet. I think the Ruckus wireless system is amazingly simple to operate, yet at the same time the Beamflex antennas provide a very sophisticated RF coverage throughout the facility. It works.